CEO of Shift Pixie is on the line with us. Uh, Shiftpixie.com, P-I-X-Y, uh, is their stock. So, Scott, how are you? You are conquering the world every single week that we talk to you. It's so <laughs> great to see. Uh, We're hard at it, Sully. Good to see you. Look at that. So he's in. Look at he's in a ghost kitchen right now. Uh -huh. <laughs> now, I would. I honestly think um, we should send a camera crew out there to walk through one of those kitchens with you to get a full tour. Like do a little yeah, biz you you, do a little bizumentary. Honestly, yep. because. The way I picture it is, uh, honestly, how I was first told about these a few years ago was imagine an empty Costco building, okay? Yep. Or, or an empty Dick's Sporting Goods building. Big, empty, tilt-up, concrete, industrial-type building. And they've got a, 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 a common use, several common use kitchens that, you're, that are used by different brands so that the delivery services can come in and just go to a central point as opposed to going and interrupting the flow of business at the retail restaurants, Genius. right? Scott, is that close? It is, yeah, not spot on. Yeah, that, in fact, we're in a, a warehouse building that was actually set up for a coffee roasting operation, and we took it over, and, and uh, so it was provisioned in such a way that we had gas coming in and all that sort of thing. And we were able to put our, our kitchen boxes in here. As you, as you saw in the last time we talked, yeah. uh, we're, we're branding these for all the different brands. And behind me, you're seeing Chef John Paul's actually, he's actually becoming kind of a, 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 a social media uh, uh, star. Sensation, uh, yeah. Just by doing, you know, showing what we're doing and the work. <laughs> I love <laughs> that. The work that we're doing here, uh, you know, building, uh, he's building the menu and the cuisines, but this is, uh, this is exactly how a ghost kitchen operation works. Tell him not to look up. We don't want to have a Saturday Night Live uh, blood spurting <laughs> incident going on on the screen there. <laughs> hey, this is great. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> he looks, but interesting. I can see how he's holding his knife. I know he's, he knows what he's doing there. He's hey, a pro. So, so um, how has that disruption changed the? I mean, first of all, let's face it: Uber Eats, DoorDash. Um, I forget the other one. Um, Mike, again, Lard you, boy. You, you know all the food ones. <laughs> that, I mean, that changed our that changed our lives a lot, Scott. Yeah. But this is yep. has changed us even further. What, is, is this a better metric for the consumer or more of a better metric for the actual food delivery companies and the restaurants? Well, I think it's a combination of both. For, for a, a restaurant brand, say a national brand, uh, rather than an, uh, drop a, a pin and, and build infra hard infrastructure, if they want to reach a, their digital consumer, now they can use infrastructure like this. It, it's very cost efficient for them, but it's, it's already up and running. And so um, uh, you're see, starting to see a lot of national brands do, uh, do that. Uh, and it, what it allows them to do is to test uh, new ideas, do either a new food idea, a new menu item, without having to drop it into their, their uh, uh, you know, uh, legacy brick and mortar. So it's getting to be very popular for them, but it's also a great uh, option for, uh, or a great opportunity to be more local for the consumers. So uh, bo I think both sides win. The, uh, uh, our, you know, we're post-COVID now, and I think th there was a lot of news talking about, well, this work-from-home stuff isn't going to last. This Instacart stuff's not going to last. This uh, Uber Eats and DoorDash delivery uh, is not going to last. Uh, it clearly is lasting because we've changed yep. our lifestyle. I mean, I mentioned during COVID, and I think James remembers me saying this, this will change our lives in some way, the way 9-11 changed the way we travel forever. Right. And I, I said, I don't think it's going to be us buying more hand sanitizer and toilet paper. I think there's going to be other no. things. This is one of those things, right, Scott? Yeah, it is. Yeah, exactly. Well, it, you know, what's the old rule of thumb to change a habit? You do uh, something different for uh, 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 three weeks in, in a row, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you've, got, you've established a new habit. That's exactly what's happened here with consumers. They've made a new connection. And it's been very easy for them. It's uh, uh, they can pick up their phone, order food, and uh, again, we, I think you and I talked about some of the stuff that we're doing that's targeting even the gamer community. Uh, that they they've uh, adopted this, and it is to your point. It's become a new lifestyle for them. So this isn't going away. Talk about the business a little bit. Again, Scott Absher is our guest, founder and CEO of Shift Pixie. They are publicly traded under the stock symbol PIXY. What I really want to talk about is, is the SPAC business, and you are also in the acquisition business and the business yep. building business. Talk about yep. all those three things uh, specifically from the top down. Yeah, we're getting ready to, uh, in fact, my uh, investment banking friend Alex is here uh, uh, today. Uh, we're, we're very busy working with AGP on uh, the uh, DSPAC process. We're about ready to announce our initial uh, transaction and uh, putting it through the registration process. 
And so that's, as you know, we've been at this for over a year and uh, this vehicle is was set up for us to do multiple acquisitions in the uh, in the industrial staffing space. Yeah. And again, this is an, another extension of all of the work that we're doing in the human capital markets. Yeah, and I think, it, I think it's significant there because, uh, you know, you guys have taken this page out of the gig economy and just put it on steroids here. Um, are you guys still focusing on handling employment, employment related issues, administration yeah. issues for those companies? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's our core. That's our uh, core business DNA. We're just de uh, delivering it differently. We're using very elegant technology to to deliver it. Had a, a great call with uh, an acquisition candidate today that that actually uh, we're in competition for this uh, uh, transaction. But uh, at the end of the day, they said we need to be a client of yours, no matter what, because what you're doing to make uh, better connections, tighter connections with human capital, nobody else is doing. And uh, and so people are starting to see that. The, if you're not doing this, you, uh, you're you going to have a lot of difficulty uh, staying connected yeah. to the new workforce. 100%. Scott, by the way, tell your banker that we want to interview him next time. We need an expert on markets because I think our audience would love it, actually. We'd love to give him yep, some exposure. Yep. Hey, yes. before you get out of here, how is that dual listing going on blockchain? Is that is that a positive <laughs> yeah, thing for you? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, we're actually um, uh, we'll probably have some announcements next week. Uh, uh, about the specifics and how this works and what the mechanics are for the investors and the investor community. Uh, so stay tuned. Yeah, I'll, have, I'll probably have some more, uh, a, a pretty strong update for you next week about the mechanics and timing. I love that. Once again, Scott Absher for president. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. I appreciate it, buddy. We're going to send somebody out there. I want to see that thing for sure. Scott Absher, founder and CEO of Shift Pixie, P-I-X-Y. Uh, and you can go to shiftpixie.com, but their stock symbol, once again, P I 